Hey everyone, Kevin here. When you leave any job, especially teaching, you are going to be absolutely inundated with advice on everything, ranging from interview questions to upscaling recommendations. But the one I really wanted to touch on and focus on here today is advice on resumes. Namely, that there is no such thing as a perfect resume. I know this sounds kind of obvious, and even though few will really use the term perfect in their advice, I have found that many on LinkedIn and other sites encourage you to at least think that way. This is why I always highly recommend that you take the advice of others about resumes with a really large grain of salt. Resume writing services are everywhere on LinkedIn. And unfortunately, some are scams targeting former teachers who are desperate for help because they aren't well versed in what to look out for. So be really aware of them. This is especially true if you hear anyone claiming that they can make your resume ATS compliant, which is impossible. There's no such thing. Oh, and ATS refers to applicant tracking system, if you are unfamiliar with the term, by the way. They are programs that essentially help filter out candidates in certain locations, salary ranges, general answers to questions if there were any on the application, and stands for keywords. That's all. You don't beat an ATS because it isn't some robot or supreme AI you need to overcome. It's just a simple scanning program. This is why also they don't auto reject applications. They might put you in certain piles, but recruiters with preferences and needs for a specific applicant reject you, not the ATS. Don't waste your money with someone who claims that they can beat an ATS. That's a myth. Just avoid that. <laughs> but to get off that really long tangent, I want to make it clear that I am not an expert on resume writing by any means, believe me. But there are general guidelines to follow that will make yours more noticeable or attractive when you're applying for jobs. For one, make sure your resume is only a couple of pages. I mean, think about it. For any single job, a recruiter might get hundreds of applications. They are at best going to spend two or three minutes skimming over and reading every single one in order to get through them all. That's why they tend to be shorter and to the point. Your resume is not an essay, so avoid being too wordy and make sure it looks uniform. No fancy shading or colors over the words either because that might make it harder to scan. Also, only list work history from the last 10 years. You can go farther if the experience is relevant to the position you're applying for, but 10 years is kind of the maximum. Make sure each job you list also is actionable and shows what you physically did at that company or in that position, which produced results. Essentially, be specific about what you did and how you did it. Use strong action verbs and give strong but concise context about what you did. Quantify that work with actual numbers, data, and figures as well if you have them. Another piece of advice. Don't put your photo on your resume. That can unfortunately lead to ageism and sexism, even though neither one of those things should, of course, ever be involved in a hiring process. But they are in some places. Be cautious with the dates you put on there in case of ageism playing a role there as well, so just keep that in mind. Another one, don't listen to the advice to make a separate resume for every job. That is extremely tedious annoying and does nothing but wear you out more than you already are as a job seeker who's probably applied to hundreds of things already. You can make slight adjustments based on the specific position you're applying for and what they're asking for in the posting, but don't make entirely new resumes as I said. It doesn't help you at all and is really unnecessary. Now, these handful I've said are just some specific guidelines that you should follow. But as was the point of this entire episode in the first place, this isn't an exact science. There is no perfect resume. Just make the best one that you can using this guidance, and feel free to reach out to people who are genuinely knowledgeable about resumes and can give you some great advice. 
rather than just trying to sell you services, promising things that they can't deliver on. And as always, I am here to help and lend a hand with your pursuit of finding a job. See you next time.